All right, well, let me welcome everybody on YouTube. We're linking you in now, everybody. Welcome. Right on. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, yeah. welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, welcome. Now this evening, we have uh, a webinar coming up, do we not? We do. Yes, Something a good to one. To. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to this one. TM, Toyota Motor, in a statement, says delays the restart of North American production to the week of May 11th. That's Tango Michael. So let's just uh, start digging around here, see if we can find something to uh, to trade, Darn it. to swing. I turn that off. Had a really good swing yesterday. <clears throat> So, Peter, how many uh, – you held 50 shares in the AMD, right? Uh, the, last after night? the close? Yeah. Yeah. Let me just – I'm trying to get the cameras set here. Do, do, do. I did, and it was scary as all heck, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really enjoy it. Out. wasn't enjoying the experience because if you look well let me call up amd here i'll show you on the screen that i'm sharing it was it was just crazy and it actually turned out that it would have been a great trade but you know yeah. at the time it was just it was too it was too much for me i uh i couldn't couldn't handle the pressure well yeah and i mean it could have gone either way i mean those after hours earnings reports are always a yeah. little bit sporadic <laughs> really hard to con Excuse me. control your risk Bless you. so here was Thank the you. here was the period right at the close and uh right at the close it just so i i was in at like 56 so i was in right oh sorry let me get my pen Jeez, i gotta get everything set up i'm really not set up today anyways um so i had taken i'd taken a trade right around here right at this 56 dollar level and it was looking good into the close and i took a partial here and i was feeling all good and then right after the close look what it did it popped up and i wasn't paying attention and people in the room like peter amd and i'm like oh crap so i got out when it came back down to my break even as you can see right here mm. putting a lot of hours out oh, but yeah. you know if i'd had some patience i could have waited all of this out because it didn't go much above my break even after that but and then it dropped like almost four bucks 350 so you know that would have been not a huge windfall but a couple hundred dollars uh, but i wasn't yeah, uh, yes. i wasn't going to be that patient to wait you know in case because i didn't know what i was going to do <laughs> so yeah you never know i just i, I just people i, I gotta admire i'm not sure if i admire people that uh, trade through earnings after the close or just think they're insane or both <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's both because it's maybe just, it's both it's both yeah like you you can make a lot of money on it, but yeah. you, you could also lose really fast. Like you think you lose fast at the open, you could lose fast <laughs> after hours. Very yeah. quickly. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Um, there was a question from. Uh, let me just come back to it here, uh, Gary. I think Gary, you were asking. Did I see a question from Gary? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got images of people like dancing on the stock market <laughs> on the floor here. And... Oh, Dave. Sorry, Dave. You're asking how many trades do we take on average? Good question. I get the question a lot. It's always a uh, it's always a relatively difficult one to answer because um, it depends on the day. So for me, I will trade anywhere from zero to probably about ten trades, ten, twelve <laughs> trades at the top. Uh, my average, though, is closer to four. So on average, I take something like four to five trades on a day, on any given day. How about you, Mike? I think uh, my guess is you're probably about three to four. Uh, a little bit lower than that. So oh, my average, because I actually keep track of this. I'm at, uh, I used to be at three to four until right. the market got all crazy on me. And now I'm down to about two to three a day. Okay. This is my average. 
And there there are days that that I don't trade. I mean, last week I think I only took four trades total for the week. <laughs> All last week. Oh wow. Yeah, for the week. Wow. It just I was battling some emotional stuff and and trying to get back into into the zone along with just setups not working and it was it was a rough week last week. It but was, I think some of that also Oh, go ahead, Peter. No, I was going to say, it's good that you were able to recognize that and you actually adjusted your trading strategy yeah. to, to accommodate. So good for you. Yeah, and I think some of it has to do too, right? We talk about major life events. Um, so Friday is the first day that I'll no longer be getting full pay from the military. <laughs> How does that affect you? Not very much. I have a plan in place. We're perfectly happy, but you know, it's that major life event that <clears throat> will play with you internally. It's that uncertainty that you're like, oh, are you going to be okay? Absolutely, I am. But there's that, that back of your mind that's always questioning it, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we got a lot of questions from people today. So yeah, let me try and get through them and answer them. So apologies if, if I miss any, but let's go back up here. Um, oh, yeah. So Jason, just to expand upon it, Jason, you're, uh, sorry, Andrea's doing a flash mob. Oh no, she wants us to do a BBT meetup and flash mob. Okay, all right. You coordinate it, Andrew will be there. I, I'll promise you that, I'll make him go. <laughs> I can't make him do anything, but I'm sure he'll be there anyways. Um, uh, Jason, you're asking, what do I consider one trade? Yeah, I would consider one trade, yeah, an in and out with all partials, right? One one trade decision, which would include the partials um, as part of that. So, yeah, because there may be, there may be, um, you know, I may take seven, well, the way Daz lists it, I could take seven or eight trades and it's only one trade because I would, you know, there would be the entry and then six partials, right? Dep if it's a good trade. So I actually hope for more partials because that means it's a good trade. The worst trades are where there's only an in and an out. <laughs> <laughs> so that means I lost money. Yes. <laughs> um, so. uh, Dave's saying, do you have profit goals that you meet and you're done? I don't. Uh, I used to have them, but I found because I'm here all day anyways, I just tend to trade all day. I definitely have objectives. I shouldn't say that. I guess there is a profit target that once I'm past a certain amount, I won't risk losing that amount, right? So for argument's sake, and I, you know, I appreciate everybody, I don't actually share my numbers, but you know, let's just for argument's sake, say that your, your uh, target is what, if $200, let's take something that's easily understandable. If, if, I, if things are going well and I have a series of good trades and I'm up to about $250, I now have $50 in my mind to risk. Right, so if I find that I've uh, I've lost more than fifty dollars, I usually I'll just stop because I might be slightly below my two hundred. But you don't want to get to a point where you psychologically put yourself in a position where you feel you have to make it back. Those are usually the worst places to be. Thor will tell stories all the time about his worst losses are when he was, you know, slightly over goal and then he lost it and tried to get back. And before you know it, you're red, right? Because you just start going into the revenge mode. I'm going to get it back. Or even worse yet, where you're $2 away from goal. I'm just going to take a little trade to make two bucks. And then you lose 10. Now I'll just take another little trade to make 12 bucks. And suddenly you're down 50. And then, you know, it just, it cascades, right? Because <laughs> in your yeah, head, you're still quickly. only two bucks away. Yeah, it 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 can make you take marginal trades. <clears throat> Basically, you can start. You know, you you get a few good trades in, ones that meet your criteria for a setup, and uh, and the, you know, like I said, maybe you're short your goal fifty bucks, and, and you you just start looking for trades. Uh, I think we talked about that in the um, uh, in that last video with Doctor Reed, did we, didn't we? We we. We yep. turn into uh, what? Did, what did he coin the term? We turn in not stalker, stalking. but a, yeah, we're stalking. We're stalking for any trade that's going to hopefully take us above that target level. And uh, you know, you just it just pushes you into propensity to push you into a uh, taking a trade that you wouldn't normally take. Yeah. Yeah. Um. 
So, uh, dollar amount used for a daily goal. Yeah, Naveen, well, I sort of answered that earlier. Same same type of question. Um, and, and profit goals are very personal. Some people have a strict rule. When they hit their profit, they stop and they're done. You know, as Andrews is a little more fluid, he's like, yeah, you know, that amount is good for the day. His profit target is much lower than what he normally makes, which gives him a lot of comfort, right? Because then he's able to, it gives him the ability to sort of stop when he feels like it um, without a lot of pressure. So I, I've always appreciated the way he's done that. Um, uh, sorry, and uh, there are some other good questions in here. Let me come back to them. Where am I missing? Here we go. I am, I am looking him right now. I am looking. Yeah. On YouTube, there are some questions about um, explaining my double top, the double top strategy. It, it's it's. It, it's all, it's both very simple and very complicated. I have to admit, my I don't trade I don't trade I don't trade a strict double top strategy. Right, the the signal in in the strategy is absolutely, um, you know what what it, what it sounds like. Right, it's a double top. Now, clearly, let, let me let me give you an example here. I was going to use the best example of a double top. Hmm, I thought AMD had it, but it doesn't quite. Um, I'll explain it using AMD because there's a couple of examples here on the chart. Um, but um, it is frankly where, you know, ideally it's at the high or low of the day. Double tops and double bottoms, by the way, exact same strategy and indicators. It's just opposite end of the spectrum, right? The best ones are when you're at the high of day and you see it hit the high of day, it pulls back, tries to test that high. <laughs> doesn't quite make it. Ideally, it comes within just a couple of pennies, fails, and then moves down. You get a clear double top signal. Now, AMD is not quite perfect here, but let me show you. It, it would look something like this. Again, if this is at the high of the day, that's even better. The key thing, though, is you know when do you know to get in it? And that's where the, my strategy gets complicated because it really depends on what's going on, right? First thing I'll do is I look down to the SPY. So here, if my double top is setting up right about here, I'm going to look down to the same time frame on the SPY and I'm going to need to see, so what is the SPY doing? Well, in this case, I would be seeing, well, the SPY is still up, you know, it's still an upward trajectory, right? So that would make me tentative about taking this double top on AMD because the SPY is not supporting it. I would also look at my time in sales. Um, what is what is the time in, sorry, the, the level two? What does the level two look like? Am I seeing orders build if it's a double top? I want to see them build on the bid underneath the active bid, meaning there's people saying, I'm looking to buy at cheaper prices, which would likely pull the price down. If I'm seeing a lot of action on the ask, there's a lot of buildup where people saying, I'm looking to sell at higher prices, I'm likely not to take the double top because it tells me that the this may be a false top and the action could continue, right? There is some demand up higher. Um, I also want to make sure that the time in sales is CHK, moving. CHK, Chesapeake Energy, uh, Reuters saying that uh, Sorry guys. Chesapeake preparing for potential bankruptcy, CHK, that going to Reuters. Potential bankruptcy. Well, they've been halted like 800 times, so. Who's that? <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, Benzinga, the squat guy just went and said Chesapeake is investigating a potential bankruptcy. Ah. But Chesapeake is... Oh, there been, you go. If you followed it, they've been halted like, I don't know, like every day in the last... <laughs> week yeah. and a half or something like it just seems like every time i look at it they're in a halt but i admit i haven't looked all the time um anyways mm -hmm. the other thing that you'd want to see is what is the volume doing if i see steadily increasing um volume on the on the candles that led to the double top then i probably am not going to take a short on it uh, because it could tell me that there is still demand and it's just waiting, you know, for the pullback and then it's going to take another run at it. Because sometimes you get these levels that, you know, it's really, you've got a big buildup of uh, bids, meaning somebody's saying, I'm, I'm looking to sell and they're just, it's just a temporary wall that it's going to hit its head at on a, several times. So, you know, mm -hmm. AMD, I've zoomed in here to this one, guys, that we were looking at. So you can see if you look at the volume here, right? So there's a little ramp in the volume. Here the volume was flat. Um, and but and then I can see slightly increasing volume right as it did that second top on the red candles so that would give me a little bit of comfort but remember the spy was not supporting this move so you know right away on this one not everything was lining up so like I said the double top is simple 
it's then the decision to enter is where I find that it's complicated because I don't have a real fixed set of rules. It's to me, it's all the stuff that's going around. Brian, you, you do a lot of like double bottoms, more double bottoms and double tops in the morning. Yeah, what, yeah what's, more, more what's interested your, in the yeah. double bottoms. Yeah, what do you specifically look at for a double bottom to look good to you? Um, a sell-off, obviously, to start with, and then um, and then you get a bit of a bounce, and then over the course, you know, on a double bottom, I don't like to see the time frame much more than sort of five to t five minutes. I like to see that pullback, um, and then pull back to the previous low, and then uh, I like to see it hold. Or you know, sometimes they don't come back exactly to the low. They might they make make a higher low, um, and then you just start to to trade it you know you try to buy into it as it's coming off that second low and the reason i like that setup is it's uh you can really clearly define your risk and usually if you can get a good entry it's it's very tight so your um you know so your trade on the upside is usually either a either the vwap or in a partial on the way up there yeah and even better, I know, Brian, in your trading, if it happens to be at uh, a number that ends in 77 cents, 0. 0.77. That's, well, that's more, of a, that's more of a trading on a, on a pullback. Oh, okay. uh, that's more of an EVCD situation. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, obviously, if you can find a level, the logical level where a stock should bounce from, like a like the previous day close or a previous day low or some prior low where it found support. I mean, that just gives you uh, a little bit more confidence in the trade that that's, uh, that's a level that's going to be strong or at least hold. Right. <clears throat> there you go. So in my strategy, you guys hear me talk about my moving average cross. So the other thing I use double tops for a lot is to me, it's an early indicator of what is a more complicated trade, which is um, double top followed by a 50, mo the 50 moving average crossing over the nine and 20. So when that happens, that's to me is a confirmation signal to say this thing is probably weak and it's likely to go down. Now we were looking at one, oh, that was a white one. No, I can't remember uh, this AMD example that I was looking at. Actually, this AMD example that we were looking at, the same one at that same time frame, look, it actually has this moving average cross. So here it is, right? Here's that, it's the red line on my chart. So I would have had everything except the SPY going in the direction. So, you know, it's one of those, I'd have to be in the moment to know whether I would have taken or not and know what the level two is telling me. And being that I don't have that level two information, I can't honestly tell you, would I have taken this trade on AMD had I been watching it? I know I wasn't watching it at noon, because I didn't take it. Um, but uh, it depends on what those signals were because this might have been a good opportunity. I don't worry so much about what the nine and 20 themselves are doing because I always, by the way, I always time my entries personally off of the one minute chart. Um, and the nine and 20, look at, they're always like right in the price action. So I just use them as early indicators um, for you know the crossing of the the uh, the 50 where they're more important to me is on the higher time frames even a two minute chart or a five minute chart then the nine and the 20 are very important because especially when you get trending stocks you'll find that they use those as support um or resistance depending which way we're going here um and, and they will bounce off them repeatedly on their way up a chain right you can see uh what was one and let's take a peek at mu i'm going to do this blind let's see if it works here but you know, so MU is running up. If you look at the nine and 20 on a one minute chart, you know, during this big run up, well, you can't tell much because it's right in the action. But if I go to it, let's go to a five minute chart here. And what does it tell me? Yeah, look, look at, uh, so, you know, the MU is certainly, it looks like it bounced off the, the nine, even moving average several times. Every time it touched it, right? It came back up and it bounced a little higher. Now here is a place where it broke through, but it didn't break through the 20. So, you know, it's one of those where you could use that as an indicator to say I'm comfortable in my MU trade until the point at which, you know, when it breaks the nine, I'd start to get nervous. If it breaks the 20, I'm getting out. So, but I, w I don't do that yeah. on a one minute chart, but I would certainly look at doing that on a five, but that's a slightly different strategy. But anyways, hopefully that made sense. Well, 
uh, spy just took a dump, a a licking. (laughs) Licking. (laughs) Did Andrew sell his shares? No, he's holding on to. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe that that was Andrew selling his shares. He did have a say. He had a huge. He was he was huge in size there. Huge. I thought he was saving it all till three hundred. He he had conviction. Yeah. No, I think that was him dumping shares. <laughs> Could be. Look at that. Look at the volume spike. Here. Andrew's moving the market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the yeah. The guy. Spike. The guy on. Yeah. The guy on Benzinga said, told told everyone Andrew's selling his shares. <laughs> so everyone everyone rushed to the exits. <laughs> get out! Get out! <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know what uh, that was. Some kind of news. Yeah. Nothing on Benzinga. The Fed's printer stopped working. Yeah, it jam- the jammed. There's a jam up. They ran out of paper. <laughs> um, Every time you guys joke about no that, paper. have you seen? Uh, there's a show called uh, Money Heist. We talked about this before. I think it was in Spain or something. Don't they go into the mint in Spain and they start printing money? And I keep thinking of now Powell in there, like telling everybody, print more money. Is that a movie or a series? It's a series. It's a, yeah. It's a, I only watched the first few episodes. I never actually got through it. So it seemed, seemed okay, Mm. but you know, so many things to watch. I got distracted. So many things. Seems like the uh, the drone stocks are uh, are in play. Wow, are we like okay, guys? I'm gonna bring this onto the screen here. I I I hope that well, there might be some uh, gaming people here. Maybe you can tell me. Big news article: 3:37 p.m. from Amazon. Overwatch champion Sinatra retires from the league and joins the Sentinels Valorant ro- roster. Not quite sure what that means. But we're talking about a video gamer that like switched teams. Is is that how desperate yes, we are for that's... sporting news? Yeah. No, this is a, this is big. This would be big news for okay. sure. In I, the, uh, I don't yeah. know who this person is. I have no idea how these leagues work. I apparently that's like I did. Uh, I watched uh, the only reason I know is I watched uh, Tom Brady. I can't remember stuff, what. Yeah. I watched. Uh, I watched some show on netflix about the uh, i think it had to do with a, a tournament and yeah how how these people train and how, how what a big what a huge fan base they have it's it's was pretty actually pretty interesting can't remember the name of the can't remember the name of that show i watched yeah. epa um i don't know the the way the market's uh, selling off here i'm uh, i'm not looking um, huh. I'm, I'm looking at some weird ones. I'm looking at um, PRPX, which is a, which is a penny stock. So I'm not suggesting anybody trade that. But um, there's TROV I was watching as well, and then there's uh, VISL. These are all pennies, so just be very careful with these. <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not really, wow, AMD just went into the crapper. <laughs> well, it's not that much. It's like 50 cents, but that's a big move for AMD. Yeah, AMD's yeah AMD. still just hanging out. Yeah. AAL's still strong, even though the market sold off a little bit here. Do you think that was just profit-taking, a bit of uh Guild is selling off here now. NCLH is running up oh, to the high, really making new highs. AAL's going. Wow. Yeah, Hilti, I know that video gaming is big business. Like, it's huge. And I know it Like it, it started, I think, usually in, in Asia, right? In Asia Pacific area. Certainly a lot of big hmm. gaming, tons of money, big conferences. Um, I just uh, I didn't know people were on specific teams or changed teams. Then again, I don't. I just know Overwatch. Oh yeah, that's that's a competitor to uh, 
Um, the other big. Oh yeah, one, these guys. I don't remember. These guys have never played. Have fan base and yeah, sponsors and everything. Oh, oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yep, they uh, and they train together like they're athletes. Well, it's, it's a skill. I mean, there's no question about that. I, I know I tried yep. to play. Uh, what was the first one that came out that everybody played? Why can't I remember the name right now? Um, Donkey Kong? <laughs> no, no, no. I just mean Frogger. the online, the, the multiplayer competitive. Probably, uh, Frogger. Call of Duty. No. I think probably Call of Duty, Fortnite. Fortnite. Call of Duty, geez. I think. Was, Fortnite, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, geez. there you go. Pretty obvious. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. My daughter, so I, I never played Fortnite. I played Call of Duty and all sorts of other like games myself. And then I went into, oh, I should be able to handle this. And I just got killed every time. Like every time, people would just annihilate me. I'm like, this sucks. Oh, yeah. I don't like it. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so there is definitely skill, up. right? It's eight yeah. ball teams. Yeah, I need to. I pl I do play eight ball in the basement, but that's on the pool table. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well. Yeah. Hmm. Look, it looks like it's going to head lower here. Yeah. Guild is guild is really dropping here. What is BA doing right now? BA he's is just hanging in there, sideways. Yeah, just flattened out here. Yep. Look at that. Hmm. Did we see any news? What caused market to? I didn't hear it. it? Close imbalance. What does that mean? Uh, well, market makers uh, they have to uh, they have to balance their books at the end of the trading session. So <clears throat> usually, as they come into the end of the session, they have uh, a number of uh, shares that they either have to buy or they have to sell. Oh. Okay. Well, we had an eight hundred million dollar uh, imbalance. Which isn't that much, actually. It sounds like a lot, but um, wow, um, Hertz. I don't, you know, I don't know. Hertz is. Uh, it did hold this uh, nine moving average on the daily, but it just looks like. Uh, I mean, aren't they? They're they're on the verge of going under two, aren't they? Hertz? They, yeah, yeah, they, Hertz they were they were t saying that they needed money. Yeah, they were looking for cash to keep going. Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the, the CFL is looking for cash. The, the CFL? <laughs> well, yeah, they're always looking That's for cash. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, this is really, is this something that should be, I mean, I kind of get it. You're not a you're not a Lions fan. Uh, well, you know, I can't say that I'm a big Lions fan, but I'm a. Mm. I don't. I'll, I'll go to a game if I get free tickets. Mm. Here we go. Visl is kind of looking interesting. Visl might take. I might take some shares home, but this is again. This is a penny stock. We don't. Generally, don't trade penny stocks. <clears throat> it's strong into the close. So that's what you like the look yep. of, yeah. Yeah, this is a. Um, this is a. It seems like these uh, drone plays are getting uh, some interest. CCL is looking strong. CCL is could be a good swing into the close here, too. Norwegian has this had a big run up too. Going in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, oh, like right now? Oh, yeah, look at that. They're yeah. Running at, like, as opposed to, yeah, a little bit more than, you know, well, RCL, Royal Caribbean is uh, up as well, although it's dropping right now. Whoops. Hmm. Fifteen seconds left to the close. Where did the day go? Well, most of the afternoon was spent waiting for Powell to finish his speech because, uh, as we were talking yeah. about in the room earlier, I don't really like uh, neither Michael. There, there's the bell. 
Um, neither Mike or I really like trading while Powell's speaking. And uh, I think for good reason, right? Because the markets can do strange things. I mean, now I think his comments were pretty much expected, but you just never know when there's going to be that one comment that either gets taken, you know, has unexpected effect on either the computers or the reporters, and suddenly the markets go nuts. I've, I've watched it happen too many times where... You know, it seems like an innocuous comment, but just because of the way it was phrased or whatever happens, suddenly the markets go wild and they can come right back, but that can really sort of mess up your trade. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. With, uh... it, it just adds an additional level of anxiety to the trade because right. it's completely uncontrollable. Right. So if I'm in a trade and I'm well, I'm a well into it, I'll often hold through that because it can often be innocuous and your trade can continue unimpeded. But if I'm close to my break even, I'll watch it really closely and I'll usually get out just in case. And Mike, I think you did that. You were in a trade and you sort of got out. Yeah. You, you could have maybe held it and it would have actually turned out to be a better trade. But as you said, like, it's just not worth the risk of that big spike happening and really messing you up. No. I got a little pop out of it, took a partial, made a cup of coffee, and uh, out of it, and <laughs> got out at the break even. Right. You know, you know, you just, I just don't like being there. I've I've been caught in a pal move before, right. and that's when you get the slippage too on your stop loss, because if you got your stop loss there, it can just, you can lose fifty cents a dollar just like that, and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh yeah, no, I got out. I'm all out of APY. I I was in it <clears throat> from yesterday at the close and got out of it in the morning here. I was happy with uh, taking the money. Um, maybe uh, you could take this opportunity, uh, Mike, to talk to us about. Uh, here's the email from uh, from Andrew. But uh, we've got a great learning event tonight. Oh yes, this is. It. This evening, we have Dr. Brett Steenbarger and Mike Bellafori both coming in to talk about how prop firms mentor their new traders, which will be an excellent thing for us because their business structure, like Andrew was talking about earlier today, is very similar to, to how we uh, here at BBT work as well. We're into developing traders. We're not into that alert service that you find in some chat rooms. So it's about helping newer traders understand the way of trading, getting through that learning curve process, and hopefully transitioning this into a career that you want to be. Yeah, and so yes, good. Jennifer, it's going to be recorded. It'll be on, it should be up in the success webinar within a couple of days. And I think we're live streaming it on YouTube, right? So. Oh, that is correct. We will be live streaming it on YouTube. Yeah. So, so everybody for anybody can that have is access not a it. lifetime member, mm -hmm. we'll have access to it. Yeah. So you should be able to see that right here. If you're on YouTube, you can see it right here in this channel. Look for it. In fact, the link is already up. I saw it earlier today. So you just have to go look for that in our feed and yeah. you can find it. So and one other thing on it, Peter, if you leave mm -hmm. that up there, uh, SMB Capital also uh, in that email oh, that yeah, Andrew okay. sent out, there's a link that you can go to to sign up for a webinar from them and that they are offering a special discounted code um, right. for their DNA service. And all the, for any money that they make, they're gonna take 20% of that and donate it to traders for a cause to help out with the COVID-19 crisis. That's awesome. So. Mm -hmm. So that's their channel and there was a link you said oh here's their training uh, yep yeah, it's in the email you can click on it the please sign up will take you to it oh, there you go there you go there i'll put that link here in the youtube chat as well perfect thanks for mentioning that mike yeah absolutely uh, so we've got some earnings starting to come out. Uh, let me let me talk about what I'm seeing here. We've got Qualcomm. Looks like Qualcomm beat their numbers, both top and bottom line. 
So what's that doing to their stock? Let me call it up here, Qualcomm. A little bit of a pop here after the close, we can see, $3. Uh, so that's definitely, in fact, let me take a note here. That's definitely going on my list for tomorrow. Qualcomm's not often something I like to trade, but uh, uh, when it gets uh, earnings, it, it can actually be good. Uh, USO, call them Vertex. Vertex Pharmaceutical, I can't say that's something I normally trade, but they, wow, they, they beat their numbers quite handily. So being the size of the beat, that might be worth uh, taking a look at. Microsoft sales, I don't have their earnings, but it looks like their sales were up. 1.4 billion over estimates. That seems like a lot. Ooh. Yeah, they're printing. Microsoft's. They're printing money too. Now. Yeah, well, uh, everybody, everybody needed to up their licenses when they realized they had to do all this stuff from home. Maybe. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, all right. So that's the news I've got so far. What else have we got on earnings? So, if you guys look here, here's my earnings sheet that I like to look at. Let me update it here. Uh, we were looking Facebook. At Facebook, Tesla. I don't see... Fa oh, wait, no. Facebook just came up here. Uh, they missed... Yeah, wow, look at that. They beat on sales, but missed on earnings. So that looks like that's Facebook's numbers. Let's see. What, is that, uh, what does that look like here? Yeah. The yeah. They're up over 200 now. They're at 1909. Oop, mm, yeah. just dropped. They're all over the place. Yeah. Whoa, shooting up now. Down and up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're uh, they're bound there and now they're over twenty, up over twenty. <clears throat> Two oh four. Logic Tesla, up, Tesla, what's Tesla doing? Tesla's dropping. Oop. Yeah, now it's up again. God, it just went from minus four to plus six seventy seven. God, how how do you trade that? It's like ten dollars. <laughs> Look at Tesla. It had a, you take it had one a, share at a time. Yeah. Thirty dollar one minute candle. Yeah. Look at that. It's uh, insane. That's a thirty dollar thirty three dollar range on that candle. That's uh, that's tough. <laughs> Again, yeah. maybe, there there must be more more. I don't know. Gutsy, stupid, talented. There's other people out like there. <laughs> <laughs> that are doing this because it ain't it, it's not us it's not how we recommend trading ebay has earnings service now that service now again one of those that doesn't normally trade well but on earnings is the one time well the four times a year that i would actually consider trading it so uh yeah so those are the ones that are going to be announcing here I think yeah, I think CCL has a has a good chance of keeping going here. Um, there's certainly lots of good. There's good, you know, from what I've seen, there's good news. I mean, there's a. They seem to, their bookings seem to be coming back to coming back for next year. We were talking about that earlier. Wow, look at Facebook, 107 now. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, it's up 25 bucks now. Wow. Spy, Spy is coming back up here. Oh, Eamon? Eamon's trading. Oh, Eamon's trading Tesla. Look at that. Oh. Look at that trade. <laughs> All right. He's one of the crazy ones. Oh, the, the folly. Eamon has no fear. The folly no of No fear. Well, you know, I guess it's working for him. Look at that. 13 bucks. He made 13 bucks, even despite his bad fills. Uh, maybe not quite. Mm. Probably $10, I guess. Mm. So, uh oh. Sorry, everybody on YouTube, you can still hear me. Everybody in the room. I closed the room. Cheers, guys. 
I'm going to be going to the store here shortly, venturing Whoops. into the milk aisle. <laughs> Whoops, that was me hitting the wrong button. Closed the room by accident. Can you guys hear oh. me now? Am I back? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Peter. All right. I, I said I hit the wrong button there. Got all excited. <laughs> Shut the room down. My accident. So, yes. Uh, why don't we take a minute here and we'll just talk about the things that uh, we had on our list today. So what were we watching today? Well, uh, our list was dominated by the things that were on earnings for the most part. Uh, that included AMD. Uh, which uh, it had earnings. Um, it turns out that, let me just pull up a two minute chart so we can look at the whole day here and I'll do the same thing for the SPY. Um, I ended up getting uh, a couple of good trades on AMD. The only things I traded today are AMD and Microsoft, even though Microsoft was not on earnings. It was just, uh, it was moving smoothly and I liked what I saw. So, but anyways, uh, AMD, you could see that uh, it actually was moving up into the open and then, well, right before the open and started to drop and dropped through the open pretty choppy through here. But then there was some of these patterns that I, I sort of like to see. So AMD gave some good signals for my trading style um, over the course of the day. Um, what else were we looking at? Uh, Gilead didn't have earnings, but it did have uh, phase three trials that were announced on a drug. I was expecting more out of it, but Guild really just uh, just drop, dropped and chopped, right? It was sort yeah. of chopping around here. I, I didn't really like the way it played. Um, uh, Boeing was a big one that did have earnings that we were watching. Uh, they had, you know, Boeing's a tough one to know what to do on their earnings, frankly, because they actually missed their numbers. But that, that would have been, that was certainly expected on Boeing, right? Then they had a call at 1030. Um, and uh, they were making statements that despite the numbers, they've got enough cash to make it through this. So you can see that, uh, you know, Boeing sort of held the line through the open and then shot up midday before leaking it back off. So it was, uh, I, I didn't end up trading it, but I know Norm took it. In fact, Norm, he took a trade right around here and then he got nervous on it, exited, and then he was busy angry, being angry with himself. And I, I understand why, because look, look what it did afterwards, right? It ran up, uh, yeah. it ran up seven bucks on him or so. So yeah, it was so close, right? That's one of those where you're right place, just the wrong time, right? So. Anyways, um, GE was one that I was watching just to see if I could get a trade on it. Uh, I watched it this morning. Had I actually did have a little small trade. I forgot about that one. I did have a small trade, I think. Yeah, I did on GE. Had to check. Um, but it, it ended up stopping me out because it didn't move as far as I'd expected. Pulled back to VWAP and then it did its sort of usual chop through the rest of the day. GE is one you go into knowing that it's not going to be a big mover, right? You're playing it for pennies because um, it just doesn't typically move more than that. Um, Got to take a lot of shares with it. Yeah, well, and, and my, you know, it works well with my risk strategy because my number of shares are always directly proportional or inversely proportional to the risk I'm taking. So in GE, if I'm only taking a five cent risk, um, you know, I, I take proportionally more shares than a stock where I'm going to be, you know, I have a dollar risk on it. So it all works out for me. So I can trade yeah. anything at any price um, to my mind because I just balance it to the risk. That's just how I play. So uh, Weight Watchers or WW Industries, as it's now called, um, had earnings as well. They beat their estimates and, and grew their subscription base. So uh, it was sort of, uh, it was a little crazy off the open. Look at these engulfing candles here. Um, that that made me think, you know what, I'm not sure that I really want to play this, but it uh, looks like it might have put in some decent moves. Um, but I stopped watching it, I'll be honest, because there's enough other good stuff that I just said I don't, I don't need that craziness. Uh, Clayton, what are you asking? What went out of business? WW? What were you asking about? Oh, GE. Oh, yeah, that was that was the rumor. Yeah, actually, Clayton made a statement. So, uh, Carlos in the pre-market show was saying, yeah, yeah, they don't move much. And Clayton made the statement. I think, Clayton, what you actually said was, well, they'd essentially have to go bankrupt for the, to move more than 50 cents in a day or something like that, right? For it to move a lot, they'd have to declare bankruptcy. And unfortunately, Carlos misread it and said, oh, apparently they've declared bankruptcy. I'm surprised it hasn't already happened. And I'm like, wow, 
<laughs> like that's how bad rumors start. <laughs> Anyways, that was not exactly what was intended there. I thought it was quite humorous. Anyways, um, the other one which I thought was interesting didn't give much of a trade in my mind was Apron A P R N or this is Blue Apron. Um, you know they were. If you look at the daily, this is one that people when you know we all got sort of initially quarantined. I guess the thought was that Blue Apron should be able to capitalize significantly off of this, right? Because people are going to be ordering more food services. They'll be at home. Restaurants were closing. And look how the price shot up over the course of a couple of days until it hit this peak. And then you see this big red candle, right? So it, it shot up on the, what is this, on the 18th of March, the 19th, it opened significantly higher and then just dropped throughout the day. And ever since it sort of just leveled off until today when they announced earnings and uh, actually said that they did not hit their numbers. So despite that everything that's happening, look, they didn't hit their numbers the stock is down now if we go back to the intraday chart and, and look at the two minute here you can tell the stock didn't actually do much during the day but uh, you know this is you know not to play fundamentals too much but if blue apron is not having a thriving business in this time it seems like there's trouble with their business model so something to uh, keep an eye yeah, on something's know. not right right something's going wrong there um, the last one that we were looking at, at least I was looking at, that I didn't trade was iRobot. Uh, I know iRobot had uh, earnings as well. They beat both top and bottom line. So um, again, with enough other stuff to look at, it's a lower float, so I don't normally keep a close eye on it, but uh, um, it, uh, it did have some solid moves here today, it looks like. So, so those are the things that uh, I had taken note of off of the list this morning. And then the other things that we had were all of the, both the airline and the cruise line stocks. So American Airline, Delta, yeah. United, uh, JetBlue, uh, Southwest, they all were moving today. Now, I don't know why, to be honest, there there was no specific industry news. Uh, Mike, you traded JetBlue. Was there any industry news that you had seen or? It, it, the only industry news is they keep highlighting how they're tr um, using their uh, aircraft to transport cargo. So they put out a bunch of photos of actually using, putting packages in the seats that people were sitting up, would have sat. Uh, the, the only other thing I could think of so. is there's some recent video, viral videos that are floating around out there uh, that people have taken on recent flights. So there are, believe it or not, there still are flights. Some people are still flying. And it was a, it, it was a US flight. I don't know where they were going. I don't, I don't remember the one I saw. Well, the person was basically showing a completely full plane and uh, and saying, you know, what the heck is going on? Like, I didn't expect this plane to be jam packed and talked to the flight attendant and was told, hey, you know, we've got 150 seats on the plane. And if we sell 150 seats, we're going to sell them because we're a business and that's what we do. So, you know, so it was one of those they're tweeting or whatever the comments saying I've never felt less appreciated and all sorts of comments about, you know, there's no way if you've got a full flight, you're not socially isolating, right? Like it's just not happening. No. So And I also anyways. saw some news that I think all the US airlines now are issuing masks and hand sanitizers when they go on when you board. That's what they were saying, that they're going to make that uh, yeah. a requirement, some of the airlines. So we'll see. But, you know, from a business perspective, you know, videos of full flights is actually good news. It may not be good, you know, good for people's health, but it's, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it could be. It's that's probably they because saying. they they probably because they cut down on the number of flights. Well, so. exactly. <laughs> yeah, when you get so many fewer flights, you don't have many options, which is why you have to book what you can, which is making them full, I guess. But it doesn't really mean it's healthy. Yeah. A couple other uh, earnings that have come out while I've been talking here. It looks like uh, Tesla's... Was Tesla announcing? Yes, Tesla's announcing. Near-term profitability is on hold. Record number of solar roofs being sold, apparently. I don't see the actual numbers here in Tesla, but they're making some statements. Uh, eBay has announced eBay beat their numbers. Looks well, they missed on revenue. It looks like beat on earnings. So mixed results there for eBay. Uh, 
I don't know. I see different reports here. One says that eBay actually beat on sales and earnings. This other one says they missed on sales and beat earnings. So I have to let it shake out here. Tesla saying deliveries are up 40% year over year. Capacity is up. Tesla's up $62, 64. Yeah. It feels like based on all what I'm looking at, Tesla's making all sorts of excuses to why they might not actually hit the targeted earnings, but everything else looks good. We'll see. We'll see. Definitely got to put Tesla on the list to keep an eye on that for tomorrow. Yeah, I, I can't trade that high of a stock. <laughs> you have a stock? No, I said I can't trade that high of a stock. <laughs> oh, that high of a stock, well, that high, high price. price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's where yeah, a lot of people don't zone. enjoy it. I don't, it doesn't bother me at all as long as I'm balancing the risk against it. What I don't like though on a Tesla is normally the spread is so big, right? <laughs> that makes it tough. When you've got a dollar spread that you've got to deal with, that makes it really hard. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, so you're basically down a buck for every share that you're in it uh, as soon as you hit the button. So that, that's, I find that really hard. But the price of the stock doesn't bother me so much. So, all right. Well, that's, uh, so some earnings. We're seeing Tesla shoot up here. We're seeing Facebook also move up quite significantly. Microsoft is very choppy. It's moved up slightly, but it's a little bit of chop here. Zoom. I'm just checking Zoom because it always moves the opposite direction. Let's see what it's doing. Uh, Qualcomm. Let's see. Qualcomm is not normally a big after hours trader, but it is showing some price action here. So, so it looks like it's going to be worthwhile uh, keeping an eye on things uh, tomorrow morning. It uh, right based on what I'm seeing right now, we could be seeing a gap up in the market, but it's a long time between now and the open tomorrow. So who knows? You so never know make... what can come out. Exactly. I'm not going to make any predictions. We could have, you know, who knows? Kim Jong-un, they, uh, <laughs> they could find out that he actually has passed away. And, you know, some generals, there's civil war going on in North Korea or, you know, anything could happen. So <laughs> who knows? Yeah, you never know. So with that, guys, we'll uh, we'll call it a day on YouTube. Hopefully, all of you in the room and on YouTube will join us tonight for that webinar. It, we've got really an all-star cast there with Andrew leading it, Mike Bellafuri, and uh, Dr. Steenbarger all together. It should be a great session. I'm looking forward to it. And um, uh, as I said, live on YouTube as well as simulcast. In a, uh, for, for our members, uh, where is it? Is it in the classroom or the webinar room? Probably the webinar room. It'll be in the webinar room. In the webinar room. There you go. For so. lifetime members, and then everybody else can uh, watch it on YouTube Live. Join on YouTube. Awesome. All right. Sounds good. Well, thanks for joining us on YouTube, everybody. I appreciate it, and uh, we will.